In this video, I'm going to explain how to estimate panels, switch gear, and circuit breakers using Red Rhino software. On this screen, you can see that I've created an estimate in Red Rhino, and I have three sections, power down the left-hand side, lighting, panels, and circuit breakers. Now, when I'm estimating commercial type or industrial projects, I like to put panels and circuit breakers in a separate section. And then I'll make a material list of the panels and circuit breakers and input them into that corresponding section. Now, before I get started on this, I want to show you that we have we have uh, material takeoff forms in Red Rhino that you can use. We have two different types. I'm going to show you now. I'm going to go to the home page. I go up here and click on home in the red header. It takes me to the home page. Now, there's two different types or forms, if you will, or two different types, I guess, of material takeoff forms. On the right hand uh, side down here, it says material takeoff forms PDF. And what that means is, well, let me just click it. Or, or I, should, I should say open the menu. Let me click on it, it'll open the menu, and it displays what forms there are. Now again, these are, these are um, um, PDF forms. You print out and uh, fill in the blanks with pen or pencil and paper. I'm not going to drill down into these forms. Oftentimes, or usually, I prefer to use the material takeoff forms uh, in spreadsheet format. So I'm going to just uh, scroll down here. And I'm going to click on Material Takeoff Forms Spreadsheet. When I do, it'll display the same forms in spreadsheet form. Now, on, in this case, um, you can actually fill these out with your computer, okay, on your computer. You select the form, and when it opens up, so I'm going to click on uh, Panel Takeoff, which is what we're talking about. Okay, here I opened up the material takeoff form for panels. Let me scroll up here a little bit. There, it shows panel takeoff. Now, it lists, the form lists several panels here. You can see the top one is a panel 100 amp, 120, 208 volt, main lug only, and so on. So again, if you prefer, you can use these forms. You'll just type the quantities in when you do your takeoff. In this case, I'm just going to put a quantity in one of these one of these and then further down let me scroll down a little bit you see a list of circuit breakers so when I'm doing manual takeoff what I do is I uh, I input the quantities I'll count all my one one pole 20 amp circuit breakers and I'll put them in here say there's 34 of them and so on right you just fill in the blanks when you do your takeoff okay so again I wanted you to know about these forms now when you're all done you want to save these on your computer in a, a folder okay so make sure that you save them on your computer they don't automatically save you have to save them like you would any other spreadsheet enough about that let me go back to Red Rhino here I'm back at the estimate I created I'm gonna go over here and click take off edit in the panels and circuit breaker section I'm gonna click edit take off and when I do, it displays the product catalog on the left. Let me unsquinch this. I want to just explain something briefly here. When I'm estimating commercial industrial type projects, I send my blueprints to my switchgear provider. Maybe it's Square D or General Electric. I send a set of plans to my vendor. Maybe it's a wholesale house. And they give me a price, what's called a lot price, for all the panels and all the circuit breakers. They give me one price for all. Now, the purpose of inputting the panels and circuit breakers in Red Rhino is to capture the labor for installation. Let me show you more. I'm going to navigate to a, a page, a set of plans here, and explain more to you, for you. On this screen, I have a set of plans opened on my computer, and I'm on the panel schedule, okay, for a commercial, or actually a commercial type project. I want to explain something. Red Rhino works in conjunction with PlanSwift uh, takeoff software okay so if you want you can sign up for a free trial for that that isn't the purpose of this lesson I actually have these plans open in plan Swift but I'm going to assume in terms of this lesson that you you do manual takeoff so I'm just using these for example let me blow them up real quick okay this job has several different panels several different size panels 
with lots and lots of circuit breakers. I'm going to use this as an example. Now, the screen I have in front of me, I um, drilled down into or, or blew up a, a page on the blueprints that shows the panel schedule here. Here we see that there's several 1-pole 20-amp circuit breakers on both sides, right? Circuits uh, 1, 2, 1, 3, 5, even and odd, I should say, or odd and even. But long story short, there's a bunch of different 20 amp circuit breakers. So when I'm doing this manually, I just count these circuit breakers, highlight them, and then eventually to put the total count in Red Rhino. And I'll show you that in a minute. I'm going to scroll down here and look at another panel schedule that has some three pole breakers, or at least one. So here I've scrolled down to another panel. It's, it's 225 amps. Again, I would count this panel and highlight that I, t that I did the takeoff, and I would go count each of these circuit breakers. And again, if you're doing this manually, you'll input it into the material takeoff sheet. So again, here's the shot of the takeoff sheet. You just go put the total quantities in here in each of the breakers. Now, if the panels aren't listed up here that you need to count, you can input them down here. You can change these any of these descriptions down here, okay? So again, it goes from the blueprints to the takeoff sheet, and then when you, um, then you input it into Red Rhino, and I'll show you how to do that. Now I'll go back to Red Rhino. Okay, changed my mind on where I'm going. I want to explain one other thing here, okay? On these plans, do you notice how there's spare circuit breakers? So you will have to purchase the spare circuit breakers, but you will not input them into Red Rhino because you put them into Red Rhino just to capture the labor. So if you see anything that says spare or space, you will not count them and you will not put them into, into Red Rhino. Again, the, the, we're going to input circuit breakers for the termination labor, the labor it takes to terminate wires to the circuit to the circuit breakers. Okay, let me now I'll go back to Rhino. Real quick, real quick, I just want to explain the the main way to learn to use Red Rhino is when you're in an estimate to watch these video clips. If I click on video clips, th these as of this recording look like this. But my, here's my point: for commercial to learn how to estimate commercial, you watch the videos down the left hand side. They're just a few minutes long. We call them video snippets or video clips. If you want to learn to use it for residential, you'll watch the videos down the center. And last but not least, oops, if you're doing structured cabling, you'll watch the videos, well, here we keep disappearing on me, down the right-hand side, okay, for low voltage and structured cabling. Enough about that. Now, how do you access or how do you input labor for panels and circuit breakers? On the product catalog, you're going to go to product 8000. You see how this says electrical, commercial, industrial, labor only? That means there's no material prices in these items. I'm going to click on plus sign next to 8000 to open it up. Now, just look a couple of items down. You'll see panels 100 amp to 400 amp. I'm going to explain this real quick. You'll see panel supports below that. You'll see switch gear up to 4,000 amp. This is where your big boy stuff is, okay? We're going to drill down into both of them real quick, and then we're going to go find the circuit breakers in here. So I'm going to click on panels 100 amp to 400 amp. Now, you remember we... We, I showed the example of taking this off on our forms. I'm going to unsquinch this, move it over. You just go put in each of the panels that you took off from the panel schedule here, okay? Now, I'm not going to read this to you, but it's important you know where, where they are and how to do it. So I'm just going to say that there was a 100 amp panel here. I'm going to put in uh, one 225 amp and just click Add button. And when, when I do... Let me unsquinch this, it populates over to the right, and I click Save. I'm going to move this over a little further so we can see a full view on the right. Scroll over here. Now, notice how it shows the panel or description here, the quantity. The price is zero because you're going to get those quoted from your wholesale house, okay, and a lot price, one price. And then um, you're going to input that, and I'll show you where into the recap. Okay, so it shows 2.59 hours, okay? And it shows the extended labor at the same because I only put in one. Now, I know I'm flying through this, but I want to show you how this works more than just give you an exhausting definition to keep it short and sweet here. Okay, so I just input two panels, but what you do is you go to the panel schedule, um, and you count all the panels, and you come here and input them all at one time, what I call a laundry list right here. Okay, next I'm going to go on to panel supports. Click on panel supports right here under panels. 
Now this is just going to throw out dollars for panel supports. Um, I don't know what the point of no support down here is. I don't know the point of that at all. But um, let's say I want to add $19 worth of supports. I'll put in a quantity of one, and I'll click Add, and it adds just $19. Let me save it. It adds $19 just for the price or the cost of anything that I decide to support these panels with. Next I'm going to go down here to switch gear up to 4000 amp. Click on that. Now it's important that you know this. When you're taking off, now this, this, these items weren't on that takeoff sheet. You could use a different takeoff sheet of ours for that. The takeoff sheet just included circuit breakers in the smaller panels up to uh, from 100 amp to 400 amp. Now in this case you want to put in each section Okay, I'm going to scroll down real slow here. Look at there, here it starts with 400 amp underground pull section, and it has them clear up to 4,000 amps. I'll just scroll down here. Okay, then it's service section. We, you could, some of you might call these service sections meter sections. Okay, so you'll input the meter section when it's applicable. Again, up to 4,000 amps. Next is distribution sections. So again, you find out the size and you put in each and every one of these sections to capture labor for each. And I'll scroll down a little bit further, and then it's just fused switches. So if, if you have to include a fused switch or fused switches, you would include those here also. I'm going to scroll back up to the top. I'm going to just say that I'm doing a, a 1200 amp service. So I'm going to put in one underground pull section. I'm going to put in one 1200 amp service section, which is a meter section. And I'm going to put in one 1200 amp distribution section. When I'm all done with that, I click add. It populates to the right. Again, I won't take a lot of time on this, but just look at what the labor it adds for each section and click save. Okay. Now, next I want to move ahead to circuit breakers just realized before I move away to circuit breakers, you want to add some dollars to support those panels. It might be more like uh, you might anchor them down. Now there's just one dollar amount. Don't ask me how they came up with this, but it's $63. Um, so I'm going to say I'm going to put in two, a quantity of two of those and add it. And it's going to put in a total of two times 63 or $126. See that right there for gear supports. Let me save that. Now I'm going to navigate to circuit breakers. I'm just going to scroll down. I'm going to go to 11015. See that? Circuit breaker termination labor. I click on it. It displays the circuit breakers. Now let me move this over, unsquinch it, so we can see it good. Now if you scroll down here, you'll realize that they have one pole 15 amp circuit breakers th through, um, what, 40 or 50 amp. Scroll down further, they have two poles and three poles. They have three pole circuit breakers clear up to 4,000 amps. So anything you or your guys have to lay hands on in the field to, to uh, terminate to circuit breakers, you want to make sure and include them. Now I'm just going to go input a couple. The purpose of this lesson is just show you how to do it and where it's at. I'm going to say that there's 22 one poles. Now I'm making these numbers up. I'm going to go uh, with just uh, two two pole 30s. Where are they at? Right here. Just two of these. And I'm going to scroll down and put in some of the big boys here. Let's say there's a three pole 400 amp, one of those. Now, again, I input, when I'm estimating, I put input all of the circuit breakers in the entire job, and it captures the labor for all of them. I click Add. Again, populates to the right over here, and I'll save my work. Okay, so there's how you input panels, uh, uh, switch gear, and circuit breakers into Red Rhino. Next, I'm going to show you, we're going to click on the recap button right up here. We're going to click on the recap button, and we're going to go put in the price that you got back, or uh, I'm imagining the price that I got, the quote that I got back from my wholesale house for all of the switch gear and circuit breakers. Next, I'll click the recap button. Okay, now I'd like to say this is not a lesson in the recap. I'm just showing you uh, how to put your quotes in. But to learn the recap, you'll go up here to video. If you want to learn residential or commercial, you'll hover on that. In this case, commercial. You'll hover on recap complete. Watch each and every one of these videos to learn how to use the recap, okay? Now I'm going to move away from that. I'm just going to show you. On the left-hand side, on the left-hand side, it shows quoted material including tax. This is the category where I'm going to input the, um, the price, the quote I get from my wholesale house for the lot price of those items. Now, I input the, uh, or I should say I have a separate section here for panels. I'm going to go over to the right in, 
of the of the material quotes and inc including tax here. I'm going to go over to the right and I'm going to click on the link in the correct section here, panels and circuit breakers. I click it. When it opens, it opens up here. There you go. When I open it up, it opens a new window where can, I can input quoted materials for different items. Now, again, I went over here to the right and I went into the correct section there, right, for quoted materials over here on the right. Click the underline zero, it opened this window, and it shows switch gear right here. Now, I just want to tell you, you can change any of the description of any of these items, um, but it has switch gear listed in here. I'm just going to make up a number. Now, I want to say something. Um, I'm going to say that it cost uh, $5,460. That's a quote I got from my wholesale house. Just know that you don't ever put any commas into Red Rhino anywhere. Okay, so I put the raw number 5460, 5460. I'm imagining that was the quote I got back from my wholesale house for panels and switch gear and circuit breakers, okay? And then I must click save and close and it adds it to the estimate here. Once I save and close it, it adds it to the recap, 5883. Okay, it actually now, what it actually did was it added sales tax as per what I have this header set at. That's another lesson. Okay, so again, you read the blueprints, make a list of materials, use our takeoff sheets if they're better than the ones you use currently, and then you go input it into Red Rhino to capture the labor. You go into the recap to put in the price that you got from your wholesale house for those items. That's it for this video.